For every popular name brand product, there is a plethora of knockoffs. I mean, why buy Oreos when you can snag some delicious cream betweens, throw out those Reese Puffs, and scarf down some cocoa peanut butter spheres? Sadly, most generic products are poorly designed in comparison to the real thing. But in this video, I'm creating three knockoff items that will crush their name brand counterparts. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. For our first knockoff, I'll be tackling Goldfish. The snack that smiles back. Goldfish. Also known as Fins, if you're across the pond. These fun little crackers look like fish, but they taste like cheese. And boy, do they have a lot of copycats. We've got penguins, whales, and even turtles. Basically, everybody just took some water-related animal and made it into a snack. I see no reason to change that formula. So for my knockoff, I'm going to use ducks, who happen to be cracker lovers as well. Now, it's clear from these illustrations that all of these brands are targeted towards a younger audience. I figure I'll do the same and have my duck mascot be cartoony too. You know, something really stylized, almost like a chibi-looking thing with a plump round body. Some tiny wings with a couple feathers for detail and a cute little tuft on the top of his head like he just got out of bed. A duck is no duck at all without a giant honker. Get a little line to separate the mouth like so. Oh, and if we want him to stay alive, we'll probably need to give him some nostrils so he can breathe. Finally, some shine on the beak to show that our friend is nice and clean. Now I want some big bulging eyeballs that look halfway cute, but halfway derpy. Some squinty purple eyelids to complement his yellow body and make him look happy. And pupils so he can actually see. Finally, a pair of bushy eyebrows gently hanging over the top to give him a nice chill vibe. Now a lot of these pieces are kind of running together a bit too much, but some black shadows will fix that right up and give us the separation we need, especially around the wings here. And you know, I've never seen a character this cool who doesn't have a little chest hair, or I guess chest feathers in this case. To really show off that pudgy form though, I'm gonna need some more standard shading as well, cause without it, he'll just look too flat. A lot of these other knockoffs have their aquatic character near a body of water, which makes sense. So it seems only fair that our duck friend has a nice puddle of his own to soak in. But if we want to stay with the desired brand colors, what if it was orange instead of blue? Kind of like it's a cheesy liquid and not just plain water. Guys, these crackers are cheesy after all. Now let's give him a dark reflection under the water that's being broken up by the ripples on the surface and some foamy white lines to show movement and help separate his yellow body from the orange water. Then I'm thinking a couple rings back here should help soften the transition between the water and what I guess would be the sky. Now as for the name for this amazing new product, I'm thinking baked beaks, because the crackers are baked and ducks have beaks. Plus names with alliteration are simply superior. Just need to extend some of those letters out to fill in a bit of blank space. Up at the top, I'll let buyers know these are made with 100% real cheddar cheese, because we ain't using no fake processed junk out here. I do want to bring some texture to all of this to make it feel more hand-drawn and organic. A few splatters on the letters and the duck should really give it that kind of vintage -y printed look. I think even some half tones down here in the shading would really help out that look as well. Finally, I want to pump up its colors so our little buddy really stands out. But now you might be wondering, every other brand shows the actual crackers on the box. And the last thing we want is to be outdone by a turtle. So I'm gonna make some duck crackers from scratch, forming them from the bones of our enemies, goldfish. The plan is sorta just to blend them together to make a solid sheet of cracker. But the thing is, I need to get rid of all of this extra lighting first. Luckily, I can use what's called a high pass filter to pull out all of that texture and leave behind the lighting. So now when I paint the shape of my duck cracker, all of that fine detail sticks around there without any of the lighting. These crackers are basically gonna look like little chicken nuggets with wings. Some overall soft shading will give them a nice rounded look, but coming in with harsher shading around the edges will really start to give them a proper cracker shape. We've just got to pay special attention around the wing area to make sure they're separated enough from the body. Now when it comes to the face, I'm hoping I can just make some outlines of the eyes and the beak and blur those to make it look like a smooth indent in the cracker. Some extra lighting should make those pieces feel more rounded and carved out instead of being perfectly flat sheets. A little rim lighting along the edges like so. And finally, I'll throw one last cracker texture on top to give the whole thing some larger imperfections. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that looks pretty darn convincing to me. So let's shrink him down, then place him here in the corner where everyone can see. And the idea is to make it look like the cracker is just gently resting on top of the box. A little bounce lighting will help him pop off a tad more, and some extra shine on top will really draw attention to him. Now, I'd like another cracker on here, but I'm not gonna make a totally separate one because nobody else does, so I'll just duplicate our duck, flip it, and place him over here in this other corner so we'll have a proper duck squad. And now, can you honestly tell me you'd still buy the lame old goldfish when you've got these fine feathered friends sitting right next to them in the store? I don't think so. Now how about we make a website for Baked Beaks with the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. They have a super user-friendly site creator that lets me select what sections I want, pick a color palette that suits my brand, of course we'll go with a cartoony font, then I can just write a rough description of my site, and Squarespace will even write my website copy for me in whatever tone I want, and I think I'll go with the playful one. With their Fluid Engine Editor, I can adjust everything with a simple drag and 
and drop. And since I can actually sell products through the site, I'll throw in a few flavor variations I made of the crackers. It's great because you can actually accept credit cards and Apple Pay, and you can even offer buy now and pay later options for your customers. So in no time at all, I was able to whip up a fully functional site for my cracker empire. So if you need a website for your business or design portfolio or anything else, Squarespace has an enormous amount of templates to get you up and running fast. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brandon Shepard to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Up next, we have Snickers, the bully of the candy aisle, always snickering at the lesser treats. But despite its enormous amount of sugar, it does have nuts, so you can feel a little better about eating half a dozen of them. Now as a brand, Snickers is pretty plain. I mean, it's just a name and two nuts, which I personally think isn't great, because if you've never had one before, you have zero idea what this bar has in it, which is nougat, caramel, peanuts, and a chocolate coating. So for my off-brand competitor, that's the main thing I want to fix. We could be like a lot of candies and just slap an image of the product on the cover, but I think it would be more interesting if we made the package look like it was ripped open and you could see the actual bar inside of it. I found this chocolate bar whose wrapper is already peeled off, so I'm just going to grab those little flaps and place them somewhere around here in that typical V shape. Of course, we'll need to warp those to make them look like they're wrapping around that big chunky bar, and I think the edges of a torn wrapper should be a little more jagged for authenticity. Then a few extra wrinkles around the area that's peeling away. Now I've got this foil to use for the inside of the wrapper, which obviously needs to be brightened up quite a bit to make it look silver, though I do want to tone down a few bright spots just so they're not so distracting. Now moving on to the actual bar, I found this pick of a Snickers that I think will work perfectly, mainly because it looks like it's been cracked open or even bit into, giving us a really good look at the inside ingredients. This poor thing does need some major color correction though, just so it looks more appetizing. We can start to get some lighting in here to make it look like this bar is resting snugly inside the package. And I'm gonna go pretty heavy on the shadow just to help the bar stand out from the foil, as well as give it a clearer distinction from the lighter foil peel at the top. We also can't forget that this foil is gonna be reflecting the bar. So it's gonna pick up some of those brown and caramel colors, which I think really adds an enormous amount of realism to the scene. The bar definitely needs a clearer 3D shape as well, and some highlights to make that chocolate look really shiny. Of course, the foil peel will cast a really dark shadow around the bar. And lastly, I wanna stick a super thin ambient shadow between the chocolate shell and the rest of the guts of the bar. It's a subtle difference, but you can really see how it helps make all of those elements a little more readable. Now you may not have noticed, but our bar, it ain't got no nuts. So I'll pick out a couple fine specimens here and carefully place them into that caramel sauce. Adjust the colors so they stand out, add in a touch of shadow to separate them from nearby elements, and finally a rim lighting to match the rest of the bar. So now for the name, I'm thinking that since our bar is so delicious, somebody has clearly already snacked on it. Why not call these snackers? Because they are a snack. Let's go with a darker pill shape to help the logo stand out from the lighter background. And I'm just spitballing here, but what if we painted the end of this red? Which of course is one of Snickers brand colors. But I think it'll really make snack be the first thing that you see. The original Snickers logo is also a little 3D, so why not mimic that here too? But I'm gonna go with darker sides and a nice caramel color outline. As a last touch, I'll clearly list out the bar's ingredients down below, just in case someone can't tell from the picture. And with that, you are now free to throw away all those Snicker bars in your pantry and fill it to the brim with the new and improved Snackers. Now we're taking on the pink miracle juice that is Pepto-Bismol. If you aren't familiar with it, this is a widely popular medicine sold to help indigestion. And back in the day, they had this super catchy song. When you have not your heart Sadly though, the package just has your run-of-the-mill generic medicine look, so this shouldn't be too hard to beat. I'll start with a blank blue slate. The name of my product is going to be Queasy Ease. It's the medicine that eases your queez. Now see, I feel like a medicine like this should look a little fun. I mean, if you're already having a bad day because you've got an upset stomach, you could at least get a little enjoyment from the package of the product you're gonna be taking. So I'm thinking a nice comic font would help give us that vibe. And I'll even make it yellow to match the original brand with that pink outline to boot. But we all know by this point that flat letters are boring. So I wanna try a 3D effect on these to make it look like one word is twisting one way and the other is twisting the opposite way. Now it probably just looks like I've shrank the ends down on these, but once I extrude them out like this and connect all the pieces with a subtle gradient, they start to look like actual 3D objects that have been rotated around in perspective. A little cheeky shadow right here will help even better sell the effect that Queasy is floating on top of ease. And just to crank up the fun even more, some small highlights on top of the text will help it look super shiny. Just gotta remember not to put highlights where the shadows are because the light's not gonna hit those 
areas. Then a little drop shadow will help that pop off the background. Now the whole point of this medicine is that it's supposed to help fix an upset stomach. And the stuff is clearly pink, which also happens to be the color a typical stomach is represented as. So I'm thinking instead of putting a big pink glob on the bottle, why not put a big pink stomach on there? Cause I mean, you can't give off a much clearer message than that. If your stomach is queasy, this is the thing for you. If your leg is queasy, well, you need help far beyond this. I wanna get a little shading on here so the form is easy to read. And then I'll put on my surgical gloves to make a small incision so we can show off the inside of the stomach. Cause it's kinda hard to portray an upset stomach without seeing the inside. A small line around that hole will represent the stomach liner. And everybody knows the stomach is full of acid, which will be yellow to match the brand colors. I think we need a bunch of bubbles in here to make it look like the acid is really excited and like it would be upsetting your stomach. Some additional lighting on these is also crucial to help them stand out from the acid below. Of course, a few of those bubbles will be floating up into the air and I'll even stick some lower down to show they're bubbling up to the surface. Now, is all of this scientifically accurate? Of course it is. Finally, some shines on our stomach, a subtle drop shadow onto the background, and we're left with a stomach that could certainly use a little help. I'm thinking though, to make this look like it's even more in distress, how about adding in some rumble lines radiating out from the stomach? Basically like this thing is vibrating so much it just fills up the background. I will fade it out a bit along the edges though, just so it doesn't get too messy, and that'll help it stay concentrated around the stomach. Now this empty spot in here looks perfect for a fun pop-up call out for the brand's slogan, Ease Your Queeze. And lastly, we'll need to put the legal name of the medicine down here, along with the net weight. Now if your tummy is in trouble, you can't tell me you wouldn't rather trust your friendly neighborhood Queasy Ease over lame old Pepto Bismol any day of the week. If you want to see me draw logos from memory, swap the genders of famous mascots, and take on other viral design challenges, then watch this video right here.